listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. Just like any other day, we have another amazing show. We have our special guest, Hillary D. Caesar. She is the CEO of Relaunch and it, she is also an executive coach. She has a long, amazing, very impressive resume. I'm going to put in the show notes because I won't do it justice going through all the details, of all the main things she does. But just a little teaser, what you'll be expecting today. She is an award-winning business expert, three-time internationally bestseller author. And she, like I said, she's the founder of two amazing projects. It's the Realize Company and Fire Up Entrepreneur Signature Course. She is also someone that was a stranger to the Silicon Valley CEO once upon a time. We'll probably get that story but first and foremost i just want to stop right there because it probably take me another 20 minutes to finish your resume and welcome uh hillary to the show how you doing oh my gosh this is so great to be here with you so excited about this conversation yeah i ran out of breath just trying to get part of your resume <laughs> so i had to stop <laughs> so kind of share with the audience what got you into the entrepreneurship world and being your own boss well, so we have to go back and I know this is one of those like, don't worry, you don't have to take a deep breath and, you know, feel like you got to lay down here to hear the story. But really, it's probably what a lot of people are going through right now. I was, um, I was a chronic relauncher. I somehow had the, the luck of the draw of having a lot of relaunches come at me. These are those transitions in life. These are those personal like divorce. I had melanoma. I had, I think, eight moves before I was uh, in 12th grade. All of these different things that happen, but then there are the professional relaunches that also happen. And I was in corporate, as you mentioned, at high tech giant Oracle for 10 years. And then I started to coach entrepreneurs that had had some infusion of venture capital funds. And from there, I decided, you know what, I need to be doing this on my own. And I decided to start launching businesses around what I was super passionate and really what was passionate in my life were kids tech and really seeing the growth of people. And I started to really create security companies to keep kids safe online. I um, have been on the board of Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo for about the last six years. And things started to morph where more and more relaunches kept hitting me. And there was one point where someone said, hey, you're like the queen of relaunch. And I'm like, I really feel like I am. And the second I said it, I knew my neuroscience background. I've been in, into the space for over 10 years and my psychology degree. I'm like, no, why did I just say that? Because when you say it, it only encourages more of it. So I started to get even more relaunches. I'm like, never again will I, you know, define myself in that role. Instead, where I am today is I, I help people with the transition, being able to, whether it is get into a new career, launch a new entrepreneurial journey, whether it is, you know, you want to have a, a bigger boy seat or a bigger girl seat at the boardroom table, I help people have not only the right headspace around it and all the steps and the procedures and the systems, but I have something very unique in what I do. And it's a trademarked program called 3HQ. And the H's are, if you think about your headquarters, you have a headquarters of you. You are your headquarters. And there's three major divisions, your head, your heart, and your highest self. And for too many of us, we have learned that, you know, the IQ of the 60s, 70s, 80s is where we have to go. And it's all about, you know, how smart are you? What do you know? How can you do the, the problem solving? And then we learned in the 80s and 90s that it was about EQ and you have to have the emotional quotient. But unfortunately, we were taught that they, again, still were siloed. And what I have come to the conclusion of after working with literally thousands of people, high peak, you know, peak performance, um, you know, the, the, the superstars in the industry. I've learned that people that only focus in one area will ultimately fail. And you have to have a unique blend 
this alignment between the head and the heart, your why, your passion, your purpose, which sometimes we think our why has to be all around. You know, you got to be passionate about all the time. And actually that's a misnomer, just so everyone knows. What you have to be is you have to have, you have to find that purpose in it because there will always be emotional waves that hit you and you may not be able to be at that passionate state 100% of the time because of life and relaunch is happening. So what I've done is, and I, I got to tell you, I've, I've never been happier. I've never enjoyed getting my texts, my DMs more than I do today because I hear about what people call miracles. I hear about what people call like magic. Um, you know, the idea of manifestation that comes out of, you know, left field. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. That's what I want to be known for. Well, when people don't believe you, they can read your resume because your work has been <laughs> featured on many major, major platforms. And I only want to uh, list them all. People can read for themselves. But with that uh, track record, how did you know that you were arriving with all the work that you were doing and, and seeing the fact that, okay, it's game time because I'm actually living in this reality? Oh, Shemaya, you know, I love that you just asked that. And the first thing that came to my mind was I hit rock bottom. And it's so crazy to say, but I was, um, I was, uh, in a, I had my own company. I just raised close to $10 million for it. I was getting a divorce. I had three little kiddos. I felt like I was as burned out as you could possibly be. I felt like I didn't, you know, I wasn't doing anything right. I, when I was working, I felt like I needed to be at home with the kids. When I was, at, you know, with the kids, I'm like, God, you know, I need to be on the road raising more money. And I ended up uh, one morning waking up with this, like, I, so thank God this right now is a audio because it, if I had the ability to show you the picture, you'd be like, dang, that is so awful. Like I woke up with this, chest rash that came from, I had been, I had already had melanoma and they were worried about something else on my, um, my neck and chest. And they'd given me this medicine. And be, I guess because I was already so toxic, it just blew up and these open welts and I was sick and I was going to raise money and I had to go to a store and buy a scarf just to kind of cover it up. And the scarf like got, got caught on it. And I was just like, I'm a total mess. I'm a disaster. What, what else could possibly happen? And lo and behold, the, <laughs> I still had more to come. And what happened was, um, and I, I wrote about it in my book, Relaunch, Spark Your Heart to Ignite Your Life. I was on the edge of Niagara Falls and one of my board members was with me. And I had this absolutely like horrific sense that something really bad was about to happen, like an intuitive hit. And I, I had a near-death experience when I was two that I've always had these, you know, intuitive ways that I coached people. And I had one for myself. And usually for myself, I wasn't really listening ever, 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 ever. I would, I would hear it, but I wouldn't listen to it. And this day, I remember I was wearing these, you know, awesome stilettos, you know, this green dress. And I come, I, I feel this like Hillary, get the hell away from the edge. I turn around and there's this guy like two inches away from my face. And I kind of scurried by him. And in the book, I never, you know, I didn't say I actually, you know, thought I was going to die that day, but there was a lot of things were desperately wrong, wrong with my life, wrong with this guy that was next to me, wrong with everything. Well, a few months later, uh, I end up, I'm about to raise um, a couple million dollars from an outside firm that was not brought in through this guy. And he says, um, you know, no, I don't want you to take any outside money. I want it to go directly through the fund I set up. And I'm like, but no, I'm going to go with this. And he says, you know, something to the effect, if you do that, I'm going to take you down. And I'm like, go for it. Try to take me down. Well, he managed to get us into a lawsuit and uh, the company ended up actually having to close because there was no way anyone's going to invest at that point. Two weeks later, 
the SEC calls me, the Security Exchange Commissioner, and says, we're investigating this guy. Apparently, he has been doing a Ponzi scheme with your company and this other one, and we need your help. And I was like, oh, no way. I gave, I gave them whatever they needed, obviously. And he ended up going to federal prison for three years. And I got a letter from him uh, while he was at prison. And it was, it just seeded everything. And at that point, I remember thinking, you know what? If I, when I create another company, because I knew it was coming, how am I going to, how am I going to rise above, be able to share, be able to, with the thousands of journeys, be able to somehow figure out when did things go right? When did things go terribly wrong? And there was a common theme that when people didn't trust their intuition or, or were interpreting it, this is really probably more the case, interpreting it wrong. That's usually what happens when it's like, my intuition was wrong. No, it was your interpretation of it that was wrong. But I thought, you know, is there a way that I could take the coaching business and spin it on its head and say, you know what, we've been doing it all wrong and incorporating that that head, heart, highest self into it. And highest self is your best version of you. It is where you have maximum growth. It's where you have and this is hopefully, you know, we still have time here to go into this last part. It's where you have unlimited, unlimited energy. And that's what I started to like. I focused all my time. I got more involved in neuroscience than I ever thought I would be. And I came up with processes that have been proven, you know, they're scientifically based And I started to watch. I started to watch my own life. I started to watch, you know, family, friends. And then I opened it up to, you know, the the individuals who are in my coaching programs. I'm like, oh my God, this is it. This is what all of these relaunches, and I think, you know, there are over 30 significant ones. This is what it's all come down to. This is why I'm here. And it's something that I call the tune in power tool. And it's four steps. And if you're game for it, I would love to take you through it. Yeah. I mean, I know the <laughs> audience is about to be entertained, so I'm down. Let's go. Okay. So again, four steps. And it has neuroscience built in. It has psychology. It has you know, ancient wisdom. You name it. It's so powerful. And it's something that absolutely every one of you can become a master in it immediately. And so when you think about Einstein, Albert Einstein said, you can't solve a problem at the conscious level it was created. You can't solve a problem at the conscious level it was created. And I remember when I first heard it, I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? Like, (laughs) I don't get it. (laughs) Like nothing about it. And when I started to dive deeper into it, I thought, okay, if I could give people a very simple four-step process that took them through the ability to up-level themselves. And I thought, how do I, how do I break this down as simple as possible? And that's my whole strategy. If it, if it is too confusing to me, I, I, I'm like, bring it down, bring it down, simplify, you know, keep it simple, stupid is like, you know, my, my motto all the time. And so when you think about if everything is energy, everything. When you just break it down in you know, a microscope, it's all energy. Emotions are energy. So if you are right now having a challenge in your life, in your business, and you can't overcome it, it might be like, ah, oh, Hillary, you know, it's up and down revenue. I got a good quarter. Or, you know, I find that like, you know, I have amazing things happen and then I stall out. It all has to do with the emotions behind it. And if you have a challenge, a challenge means that it's a lower vibrational emotional energy. And so what we want to do in order to solve it, like Einstein says, to, you know, create this new way of identifying it by looking down on it from a different perspective, a different energy level, we got to rise up. Energy on demand. Energy for growth. And so first part of this four-step process is what is your biggest challenge 
that you are going through right now. And let's just, for ease sake, let's just keep it with business. So Shamaya, what, what is your biggest challenge, you know, that you're the intention that you're trying to put out there right now in business? Man, I mean, everyone's going to say sales. I will say yeah. um, that's the obvious one. Everyone wants more money who doesn't. But I would say basically just getting through all the different bells and whistles of wearing different hats. Okay, so, so you actually, okay, so there's two things here. And I agree with you. There's the sales, there's, you know, which really, you know, lead generation, getting more leads to create more sales. There's conversion. There's a lot of different aspects to that. But then it's also as an entrepreneur having to wear so many hats, right? So you got a couple different challenges. What would be, what would be the one that if I could say, let's nail this one. And this could be, you know, the one thing that allows the dominoes to drop. What would that be? It'd probably be the workload. Okay. So where you're focused with your work, is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to say focus because again, if you're focused on the right things, then the outcomes, but we got to always make sure we're focused on the right things because there's a lot of things that are distracting us that aren't actually going to add to the bottom line. Okay. So that is your challenge. It can also be an intention. And I just want to mention this right now. I get people who come to me that are about to go on, you know, significant stages, TV, radio shows, you know, actual live stages, and they want to bring their A game, right? So it can be an intention as well. Just, just understand that, that a challenge doesn't necessarily always mean something negative. So then step two is by far the step that I am like, I like, I, this is, this is what excites me the most. It's when you think about your challenge, that was all head-based. Step two is actually elevating your energy. And that is the highest self area. And so how we do this is we change the channel. And how do we change the channel? We tune in. And the way we tune in is that there are songs, and this is, again, scientifically proven, that you can change your state by listening to a song for 20 seconds. It can take you from a low vibrational energetic level to a higher level. So what would you say is a song that truly, when you hear it, when you hear it, Jemaya, you're like, yes, it lights me up. What would that song be? It would have to be the song that I first heard in Las Vegas when I was on vacation, uh, God Did by DJ Khaled featuring um, Jay-Z, Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and, and John Legend. Ooh, okay, so so good. So God did, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do now, and if we weren't on this show right now, you could put it on and actually listen, but because of the laws, we can't do it. We can't. But, so what I can have you do mm. is hear it, hear it in your head. Have it come down and wash over you in waves. And as you're hearing it inside of you, For 20 seconds, as you're playing it, first off, you're not playing it loud enough. Turn that thing up. Turn it up right now. God did. We're turning it up. But I want you to take it all the way to your toes. And I want you to move your body. Change your state. Hear it. 20 seconds. Take it up and down your body. This is step number two. And when you start to feel, we get, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that people say, you know, intuition is a sense of knowing. It's in your head. Intuition is a gut feeling. It's in your belly. Intuition is that, that all sense of like, I just knew. I just had this sense, which is that highest self. So I want you to take it through your body and feel it to your inner core. Okay. So that's step two. Now, and again, it's 20 seconds or more, either out loud or inside your head. I like learning how to do it inside your head so you can do it at any point throughout the day, even if people are around you. Then step three. Step three is where we now are heading into the heart. 
And this is where we are going to create a mini movie in the mind, a mini movie. This is the visualization. This is when you're not only a radio talk show, you know, phenomenon, you now are the director of your own movie. You're also the star and you are seeing yourself as you're like focusing on everything. You can't focus on the wrong things. Everything you focus on right now turns to gold. Everything is like revenue producing. It's just like you're impacting. I want you to think about how that would feel. And there is an image of you that you're going to create. Your eyes are shut. You're creating this image of you on like either a stage, you are in an environment and there's a color. And there's a color, again, neuroscience coming in here. There's a color that you're either wearing or you're seeing. And I want to ask you, what color are you seeing right now in this mini movie of your mind? Oh, it's blue. It's always been blue. my favorite color. Yeah. Perfect. I want you to intensify the blue. I want you to intensify the emotion around this success, around knowing, believing it's already done. And I want you to one exit. I want you to two exit. Feel it. Tune back into your song. God did. Feel that. Feel the power behind this. Five exit. Ten exit. You are like out of your mind. This is like the greatest thing. The feeling. And now as we do this, we're going to take just like every single great movie. You're becoming like the Academy Award winner right now. We need a still shot. So with another anchoring process of step three, I'm going to ask you to open and close your eyes three times when I say the word click. You're taking an internal picture of this image of you with the success you are believing. It is blue, blue, blue intense. Click. Open and close your eyes. Click. Open and close your eyes. Click. Open and close your eyes. You now have three images. Pick one, and that is the cover. That is the cover of the trailer, the cover. It's in Times Square. It is like, there you are. And now we're going into step four. We're going to tune back into your song. God did. You're going to go back into that state. And I'm going to ask you, what is one micro step you could take right now when we're done on this, when you're thinking right now, something very small. Remember I said about the dominoes, the first push. What is one thing that you could do right now to get closer to that mini movie in your mind? One thing. Well, one thing, definitely play the song. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Okay. You're going to play the song. Yeah, that's an easy step the right there. Yeah. And then once you're playing this song, and here's the thing, micro steps are just that. So imagine. Imagine right now, you're not doing this tune-in process one time a day. You're doing it five times and you're doing it five days a week, seven days. All of a sudden, seven days a week, you're doing it five times. You got 35 micro steps towards, towards that, that ultimate of what you're believing to be true. And what happens, like Einstein says, is that you're being able to elevate yourself, which is taking you to a higher level. And why this works is this. If you think about your belief system, your belief system has been formed from your emotions and your thoughts repeating over time. So if you have challenges, those are thoughts and emotions that are repeating over time. We need to get yourself above all of that so that we can hear and listen to what's being said by that higher self, by what you innately know, by your intuition, so that you get to the success marker faster so that we can start to jam on other things that you're really going for, like the specifics around what you ultimately want to manifest. And so by bringing this out, you're, you're fine-tuning your intuition, you're gaining clarity, and you're also elevating yourself. And remember, relaunches are going to happen, right? You don't know what's going to happen even in you know a minute, an hour, tomorrow, the next day. And when you have the ability to tap into a tool like the TuneIn Power Tool at any time, 
I have literally had my launch of my, my last book two days before the launch. And I was so excited to have my dad be there. My dad died. And it was one of those, like, all I could hear in my mind, and my, my heritage is, we were one of the first vaudeville families in Nebraska. And all I could hear is the show must go on. The show must go on. And I thought, how the hell am I going to, like, I, I don't want to. And I hear, I'm like, they wanted me in a sparkly dress. And I'm like, that's the last thing I want. I tuned in. I tuned in, I elevated myself and I thought, you know what? There's a bigger message here. There's more that needs to be out there. Understanding people, you can get through it no matter what it is, but it is very difficult to try to get through it sometimes at that lower level. And this gives you the bump and it gives you that that growth on demand, that tune in for your own energy. It's like plugging when you're when you got an electric car, you got a Tesla and you're on, you know, one of the last miles and you're like, oh God, I got to get this tuned in. And you have a choice between, you know, the fast, the fast one, or you got the one that's going to give you like five miles in about 15 minutes. And you're like, I'm supercharging this sucker. This is a way to supercharge your day. And you don't do it once a day. You constantly, no matter what you're doing right before any appointment, anything that changes where you're like you're coming off of a, a call and it was like, God, that was like low energy. We all know it. You walk into a room, you walk on, or you get on a Zoom call and the person's like, hey, what's up? You're like, oh, oh. like just not good. This helps you elevate. And the last thing I'm going to say is this, probably not the last thing because you're hearing me talk a lot, but no, the last, the last major thing here is that we have um, over, I think it's 86 billion neurons in, you know, within us. And we have these neurons called mirror neurons. And there was a fantastic study of monkeys. And when monkeys ate a peanut and they had to crack the shell and another monkey was watching them and they put the probes on the head, the monkey that was watching them actually had the same reaction in their heads as the monkey that was cracking it, as if he or she were doing it as well. And so what I want you to know is that when you think about who you're surrounding yourself with, stop thinking about like-minded people. Stop. Think about like energy people, because those are the ones that are going to allow you to have, manifest, create, anything that you want. And I have been witness to some of the crazy, one came in a couple days ago where she, you know, came to me and said, I just, you know, I'm really not happy with this job. And I said, well, let's get really clear on what would that dream job be? And we came up within about a week, exactly what she wanted. She was like, oh, I don't know where this job would be. And I said, I, you know, let, let's see. And the next day I got a call and she had been fired. I said, it's a good thing you came to me when you did. We now have the perfect job for you. She said, but Hillary, there's no jobs out there right now in this space doing that. Da, da, da. And I said, you don't need a lot of opportunities. You just need the one that is perfectly aligned to this. Well, two days ago, and we actually put a date out there, which is so crazy. The date was September 12th. And on um, September, it was actually September 19th. She calls and says, I, I'm like dying right now. I just got the job. I didn't get the job I went for. They told me, you know what? You're not right for that job, but let's create the perfect job for you. And they created the exact job with the exact money, which I said, never play small. Let's elevate that. And that's exactly what she got. And so the tune in process, this, this woman did this not just five times. She did it 10 times during the day. Her, you know, it would be the God did song. You have that one song that is attached to your big challenge and you keep tuning into that song. And maybe there's a, 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 the intention of like, you know, just firing up people and getting them so excited about your product, your vision, your mission. And you have a different song for that. Maybe you have five songs that are your go-to songs, but this tune in process works and not only does it work for getting, you know, more leads, more conversions into clients, to sales, to revenue, to profit margins, it also 
I've been able to literally tune in and create and it's starting to be faster and faster. This is the best part of it where things were taking, you know, they were taking some time to actually come to fruition and now things are happening um, truly lightning fast. So I, I give you the wand to start activating your own internal magic with the tune in power tool. And the only thing I'm going to ask you is let me know how it goes. Cause that's the other thing, the accountability sharing with someone that, you know, Hillary, you know, this, this works, this works. So, you know, you can DM me. Um, I'm over on the relaunch co uh, on Instagram and just like, let me know, Hey, this is what I tuned into. This is what I'm going for. And keep sharing with me. Let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions on it, you know, I can, I can help you out. We've been talking to our guest today, Hurley D. C. Sar, and man, yeah, I like what you're saying because this is crazy. You don't even know the story of the show, which is like mind blowing in itself. So everything he's talking about is actually something I did uh, back in 2016. I wrote on a piece of paper. I didn't know nothing about recording shows, podcast shows, hosting a show, distribute uh, shows on different platforms, all that. I didn't know anything about getting equipment, mixer, microphone, all that. I mean, I did have my day job, but I'm just saying, doing it by yourself, you know, your own management, you're doing it, it's your baby. I wrote on a piece of paper. I wanted to, in, I wanted to interview uh, the most influential people around the world. That was 2016. It's 2023. And I just got yeah, it's still good. You know? And when I did that, I did it because this is gonna blow your mind even more. I did that because when I was in college, I wrote down a piece of paper about, you know, graduating, but I wrote down my favorite quote of all time that I when I read it in my sophomore year in high school, I kept it with me. But when, when I went to college, away from home, I put it in my wallet. I wrote the quote down because it's that much uh, importance to me. It was by um, Blaise Pascal. And he said, uh, in faith, there's enough light for those who want to believe, but also enough shadows to blind those who don't. And I read that when I was struggling in uh, college, because you know how it is, people want to get away from home. They want to do everything that they weren't allowed to do at home. And then I went through some, you know, some struggles. And it was either A, you know, I don't finish the course in my series of going in college, or B, I stay the course and I walk the stage. I rolled my piece of paper, had in my wallet, and I read it every day. Blaise Pascal, there's enough, uh, in fact, there's enough life for those who want to believe, enough shadows to blind those who don't. So every day I had to choose if I'm going to look at the shadows today or am I going to look at the light. And when I kept looking at the light, guess what happened? I, I graduated. I graduated within a year and a half. And I was so 20. So powerful. And then other challenges come get out, you know, 2010, uh, grew up in Michigan, so the whole meltdown, the, you know, cars, you know, mm -hmm. companies, all that jazz, so, like, coming out of college at that point in time, and it's hard to get a job and blah, 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 it's like, oh, here comes another challenge. Well, I was on my way, moved back to San Antonio where I was born, I just, I was raised in Michigan, born, San Antonio came back, family was already moving back here. And uh, end up getting a job at a local church just to start out, so I can start paying my student loans on my, you know, college investment. Didn't know what's going to happen, what's going on. Boom, found a mentor. And mind you, every time I had struggles, I, I I'll go back to this quote: "Is enough life for those who want to see, and enough shadows blind those who don't want to believe." And so, found my mentor. He helped me uh, learn about the business game. He taught me uh, a lot of things with production and boom, started my own company while I was working uh, part-time at a local church. Happened to be media. It's funny how media can kind of choose you or whatever career kind of chooses you because it's kind of like something you kind of grew up with. I didn't even tell you prior to all this stuff, 
I used to listen to radio all the time when I was little. Mm-hmm. Crazy, right? Makes no sense, that's right? Bad. And now that's my day job. But I still do my business, but I still do my day job. So what I'm trying to get at is before all this happened, before I started interviewing celebrities, before I started interviewing people and put on my homepage, and people were like, man, how the heck you talk to someone? So I'm like, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I just know I show up. And that's the light that we see. Everything looks different 5,000 feet in the air, but when you're next to it, you really get a better look. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you got to avoid uh, trying to look at problems from a distance. We want to see it far off. We don't want to get too close. But sometimes you got to get so close that you just, boom, okay, it's not as bad as I created my thoughts. Because I either look at the shadows or I stay my focus on the light. It's beautiful. Now, I'm still warming up. Like, I'm still in the kitchen. It's not even like <laughs> prime time, you know? And yeah. I can say prime time because. Uh, Coach Prime is uh, really inspiring a lot of people in America. But you know what? I, I guarantee it's because he he's tuned in. You know what? I'm a Colorado girl. That's my team. I live in See, Boulder. And we didn't talk about this, you, right? I uh, didn't say nothing about this. No, no <laughs> idea. And he, you know, he talks all the time now. Believe. Yeah. You got to believe. And I sit there and I'm like, this in, in your your origin story, you know, understanding like you got to you got to have something that you keep going back to of yep. where because I, you said it was the challenges. I say it's the relaunches. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that I do want to just highlight, which is a cool story, is you know where the tune in process came from. No. I was uh, I was sitting in a car with my daughter, my youngest. She was a young teenager. And she was, uh, she's a beautiful singer, uh, currently goes to USC School of Music there. And, but at the time, she was just mad at life. She, you know, mad at the boys, mad at the girls. And my God, she was mad at me no matter what I did. And she'd get in the car and there was this, you know, time period of like, oh, you could cut the air in the car with just like, you know, a knife as I drove her, like we barely would talk and, so one day she got in and it was just, I could tell it was more than just being pissed at the world. It was, she was depressed. She was, had anxiety. There was just a bunch on her mind. And all of a sudden I thought, you know what? Let's play a game called change the channel. And when I click an imaginary button on the radio, I'm going to say, you know, pop, uh, country, uh, she, she loved to rap. So like, you know, rap and you have to sing a song or I could say Taylor Swift or whatever I said. But as soon as I hit the button to change the channel, you have to stop and go on to whatever else I'm saying. Of course, the first, you know, few times she's like, this is so stupid. Well, eventually she started to play along with me. And then what happened one day totally changed everything. She gets in the car and she says, let's play that, you know, change the channel. And I'm like, what? Like, what? The, what just happened? And by the time I got her to where I was dropping her off, she was a totally different person. And she got out of the car and she shut it. And I'm like, I felt the energy in the, the car. It was different. And I, and what happened was I, you, you heard step number three, change the channel. I've now, it still changed the channel, but it's tune in. Because as you're saying, people are getting too comfortable with tuning out. And what this does is it, it, it brings it back in to a focus that is not so big, so out there, so like, oh, I can't deal with this. It's keeping it, it's keeping it like, I, I got it. I got, I can do this tune in right now. It's fast. And there is no doubt you have that song go through your body for 20 seconds and you keep doing it along the different steps, you, you will, you will feel differently after, guaranteed. You know, there's three lines that's going to blow your mind, the song that shows. I'm going to mm-hmm. say it real fast. You're going to be like, what? All right, so check this out. And part of the song says, uh, they didn't believe in us. May we bow our heads. Oh, but I, but I know God did. God did. Oh, yes, he did. Boom. 
<laughs> I wish you could see me. I wish this was not just like a, a radio, but oh, so good. So good. And this is exactly the message. I think this is what my why is. This is why I wake up every single day. And last but not least, I just got back from Japan and crazy manifestation story. I don't have time to tell you. It's so good. It's one of my best I've ever done. But I ended up coming home with this calligraphy art piece. Um, and it says, every day is a good day. And there was a point where I asked this, this incredible woman who had been studying how to make matcha tea, one cup of matcha tea for 18 years. That's what she did. That's like all day long. This is all she did. One, this beautiful cup of matcha. And I asked her, I said, you know, why doesn't it say every day is a great day? Why, why just a good day? And she looked at me and said, Hillary, you have the choice every morning to make the day either a great day or a bad day. But when you first wake up, every day is a good day. And then you end up deciding. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was so good. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what, you, that's, what you're, that's what you're all about. That's why I was so excited to get on here and see Man. where this conversation Man, went. that's deep right there. It's, it's deep because it's simple. Sometimes the most simple things are the most profound things. And when I'm a visualizer, like that's who I am. Uh, this will blow your mind too. I was at a community college in Ann Arbor, Michigan, prior to my university experience. A guy uh, who's military, he asked me, because I was at a local campus job fair, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, man, he said, uh, you interested in being... A Marine. And I said, it's funny you said that, you know, I have family who served. Granddad's a Marine. And uh, I didn't tell him that, but I said, I said, what am I going to do? And this is why I spoke. It was simple and clear. I said, what I'm going to be doing is going to be related to audio and visual. I said, I don't know exactly what it will be, but that's, that's where I'm going. I'm going to University of Toledo. And then I'll figure out from there. Who knew I was be a radio host? Mm -hmm. Who knew I was gonna be a podcast host? Who knew I was gonna be giving people advice? People been asking me to give advice for how to do a podcast, how to manage podcasts, and all these questions, all that. That is like, man, it's all mapped out, and it's like I said earlier, visually, everything looks different five thousand feet in the air versus when you get up close, even though it's the same thing. It just looks different. And remind me of what one of my uh, professors said. He put a mug on a table and he broke the class up in three sections, left, side, right, side, and center. And he had all of us divided up. And he placed the mug in front of the classroom. He asked each side, first the left, the right, and then the center, the same question. What do you see? Left side saw what they saw. Everyone said a coffee mug. He said, no, look closer. What do you see? And he asked it again. Left side, right side, center. Left side said, we see a white mug with the logo. Center says, we see a white mug with part of the logo. And the right side says, we don't see any logo at all. We just see a mug. So he wanted to teach the class that uh, just because you see a mug doesn't mean you see the whole thing <laughs> because so of your good. perspective. Mm -hmm. It's until you move where you see it all. That is what a great lesson. So that's why that quote still means a lot. Because a lot of people are like, man, why don't you just move out of L.A.? You can be rich. You can be doing I'm like, that's not my calling right now. What I'm doing with this show is mind-blowing. I started with two or three people who listened to my show. Now we're over 75,000. Tell me how that's worked. I can't explain that. 
It's like the mug. I can't explain to the left side of the class why they see what they see, or the right side of the class why they see what they see, or the center of the class why they see what they see. All I can say, here's the mug. But it's up to us to move and keep moving. That's why I know my greatest lesson based on all the major people like yourself who get on the show, who take time out to give people knowledge and action steps. It all came on a piece of paper I put in my wallet. I said, I want to interview the most influential people around the world. I didn't even know how to mix properly. Like I told everybody who asked me the secret sauce, I, I t- say the same thing. I suck. There's no, <laughs> there's no secret to greatness. I, I just started. That's the difference. You're on day one. I'm on day 5,000. That's why it looks different 5,000 feet in the air versus up close. It's a different perspective. Once again, I didn't mean to take the mic like that, but we've been talking to our guest, Hillary. Uh, this is probably going to be a very epic episode that I think people are going to enjoy because uh, not only did we double the time, but uh, I think people are really going to wake up from whatever they are going through and be like, you know what? It's game time. God mm-hmm. did. They it didn't believe time. in you, but guess what? God did. Oh, yes, he did. And sometimes you just got to remember just because you're facing the odds can be by design because it's for you to beat the odds. You're not supposed to be with the crowd. Sometimes you're supposed to be different. And that's my mic drop. <laughs> You've been listening to the I, show. I don't even know how to close it. So how I, can people I, keep I in got, touch with I you? Got, I got one thing I do want to say. Yeah. Okay, just to just to put the bow on what you just said, I have um I have a podcast. It's called the Relaunch Podcast, and for the first probably fifty episodes, I called it the Silver Lined Relaunch. Now it's just the Relaunch Podcast, but the Silver Lined Relaunch, and I talk to people about their major relaunches in life. And we're talking like, I've had people on there that have been literally zipped up in body bags, have lost limbs, lost family members, sicknesses, you know, molestations, rapes, I mean, you name it, Uh, even um, Holocaust survivors. And there's always a question I ask either on camera or when we're off, I said, if you could go back and, and do it differently, would you? And do you know, Shemaya, not one person, and now I think I've done about 200 episodes, not one person has ever said, yes, I would. Because if they didn't go through what they went through, they wouldn't be who they are today. And so for everyone listening, no matter where you are in your relaunches, no matter where you are, you have the ability to have grace going through it. And when you get through it, there will be a silver lining. And that's when you can pull out that piece of paper, like Shemaya talks about, and put your quote, use his quote, use the tune in power tool, but realize you got the support. You know, you do. We're here from an energetic level. Again, not like minded. Stop. Stop with that smallness. There's something so much bigger for you. So Shamaya, thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to talk to me. Appreciate it, man. And there's two things I want to say because this episode is so powerful. Uh, One thing is a comment to you said about the silver lining. You you don't even like (laughs) know what my thoughts is, but it's crazy. I just had someone yesterday tell me about um, how every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> and they remixed it and said, what if that silver lining was you? Mm. You know? Yeah. And when they said that, I'm like, what the heck, man? This is crazy. Like, everybody's, like, saying things that make me rem- reminisce on things I went through and stuff. And it's like, I used to tell people all the time, because I used to write quotes, because guess what? I studied philosophy in uh, Toledo, so I can't help but, you know, study mm-hmm. But I used to have a saying that uh, 
our pain is other people's medicine. Because when we get to survive those things, now is our job to try to pass it forward to everyone else who might be going through what we already survived. And so that speeds up to another last point I'll make. I promise you I'm in the show. But there's a retired Air Force guy who made a statement that changed how I think and all that. And he said, uh, if you don't care about the day, the date of your birth or the date when you die, it's the dash. Because what did you do with your life? What, what, what did you want to do? And what did you do after you wanted to do that? Sometimes we just wait and wait and wait. And we're like, we just want someone to do this and do that for us. Well, what if it's you that has the tools that people can use to better themselves? That's why you on the show, you're giving something that's probably going to change someone's whole life. They're going to stumble upon this podcast, be like, yo, okay, I'm going to change the channel. Hmm. Because that's what happens when we live our purpose. People end up changing the the channel. That's why we have our favorite professors, our favorite people, because they help us change the channel from what we were tuned into, and they gave us something better else to uh, tune into. That's the power that people have as individuals. You don't need a system. You are the system. And I rest my case. (laughs) Uh, That's so good. (laughs) So how can people keep in touch with you? Because, man, I feel like I just, like, feel like I was at a TED Talk. Oh, it's so good. This was a wonderful I mean, seriously, I'm buzzing. Like I, you, you talk about my energy at like that highest level, it's there. So good. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for bringing me on in this conversation. I well, appreciate your time. Those who are listening to this and they want to uh, visit you and keep in touch with everything you do, how can they best do that? The best way is first and foremost, go check out the the relaunch.com the relaunch.com and there's a quiz there you can see where you are we all like to assess you know in that 3hq head heart highest self check it out take the quiz see where you are and then come over to instagram and that's the relaunch co and just let me know let me know that you know you're tuning in and let me help you let me help you through that like first few moments of tuning in because once you once you get it it's it literally will be something that becomes one of the biggest success habits that you will continue to use permanently once again i want to say thanks to our guest harry d caesar for taking your time talking to us you have a good one